This HAN Network video is brought to you by Coastal Orthopedics. Welcome back to Nutmeg Sports on the HAN Network. Very happy to have a special guest in house today, besides Don Ang, of course. Besides. Uh, besides you? Special er. But she looks better in, in the sweater than we do. I she mean, really, those are some sweet colors. It, it, you know, I was just thinking that. The, the, uh, the, the green and the blue, I, I don't know what that reminds me. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's just right. Anya yeah, Badalino is a uh, defenseman for the Connecticut Whale. Nice to see you. Thanks nice for we finally worked this out. I know. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here talking to you guys. For a couple of months, we've been going back and forth on Twitter. We've been exchanging messages, and finally, we worked it out. The NWHL uh, and Anya joining us, and you know, I sent you a note this morning saying I could understand if you don't want to come on today after the uh, events of yesterday. Yeah, we had a big loss yesterday against the Buffalo Buttes. So they're going on the road to the Isabel Cup, and we're going to cheer them on. You know, it was a good game. It was a great series. It was a lot of fun. We brought it to three games. Um, but at the end of the day, they came out with a little bit more grit, and they had a hot goalie, and that's what you need going into playoffs. So it's going to be good for them. Tell us your background. How did you get to this point? So for me, I was just joking around. I, I played high school hockey. I played double-A. I'm from Massachusetts, so it was a big hockey area. Um, then, you know, my junior year, I signed with Boston University. Ended up playing there for a few years and then left, played for the Canadian Women's Hockey League, played pro out in Canada. Um, and then this league started up, had the opportunity to make some money and play and, and kind of represent my hometown and, and where I'm from. And it felt right to start getting involved with a, a U.S.-based league. So I, I was signed with Connecticut, started my season here, and now, you know, a short six months later, I'm talking about postseason play. Don. I, I was no. That's a that's a remarkable story. Now, how, how was it? Because um, uh, you were actually in the studio when we were looking at some of the highlights from uh, from the from the state playoffs. It's got to be night and day now. Like uh, like when you started playing, girls hockey ha must be must have been a lot different than it is now, as far as like the numbers participating and uh, and the way it's covered. Yeah, absolutely. I was just saying, I, I've never seen kind of anything like that where people are analyzing girls hockey in high school. I was an eighth grader and I got a a waiver to play and I was the second year of hockey in, at Waltham. So Waltham High had just invited uh, women's hockey to start joining up. We had a locker room, we had like all these fun amenities, but <laughs> we were honestly a group of girls that just wanted to play the sport and it wasn't great. I, I wasn't anything to come watch, but it was so much fun and you know we were all playing on different teams and anyone that kind of had any potential were playing double A and you know so it was a little bit different and in a sense, but Massachusetts is so great for hockey that we had the fans, we had the bodies. You know, I came up as an eighth grader, so I played varsity my whole five years. I ended up grossing something like 390 points. Or, you know, hockey was different. You, if you could play, you could you stood out like a sore thumb. So it was a much different world. I think now it would be a little bit more challenging, but um, to watch it grow, that's that's the that's the best part for me. That's why I'm here. That's why I did the whole pro hockey and advocating and connecting and doing all these things because. It's taking off like wildfire, and I love to see it. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to ask also, you had mentioned that, you know, obviously when you first started, girls hockey had just started in Massachusetts. Then you get to a national program like Boston University. Had to be a tremendous step up, and, uh, and, and you know, yet you were able to, uh, to excel there and then to play professionally. Talk about, like, just, just how big of a difference there is from high school, high school to Boston U and now professional. Yeah, so just to put it in perspective here, I left Waltham High School playing the entire game. I had a water bottle on the goalie net, and I'd have some sips of water. I'd take a penalty or two for a break, obviously. <laughs> and then my roommate, when I first got to Boston University, was Marie-Philippe Poulin. She had a gold medal. So she's leaving the Olympic Games in Vancouver, and I'm leaving my high school rank in Waltham, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe we're on a different level. You know, maybe we've seen hockey at a different yeah. level. <laughs> so it's a little, it was a little different, but... You know, it was the difference maker between night and day. It was the entire game of women's hockey flipped on its head. And so for me, it was I went from the best player in the very small pond to working at just competing. I had to work to just be able to compete. And so that was, for me, the hardest part was trying to get out of my head, like, oh, I'm great. I committed D1, like pat, up, pat on the back for me, to showing up and saying, oh, my gosh, I can't even keep up with the level of play. So it was a very tough transition, but going from high school to college was a whole, like a, a whole nother world, and then going from college to pros is a whole nother world, because it's the best player on every college team. So it, it's every single time you, you get another jump and another notch on your belt, and you're going a little bit higher, and you're pushing a little bit further. 
So I think every year I've gotten a lot better. So it, it does change the game. It is so crazy to watch. How has the reaction been to the NWHL? From the player's perspective or from the fans? Well, we'll start with your, your perspective. Yeah, I've noticed, you know, we've never felt like we had a home where we could go and, and kind of shake loose and feel supported. And I think that's what the end up does. It gives you a good blanket of people that you can call if you have a problem or if you want to talk about something or if you need new skates or, you know, that never existed. We couldn't say, hey, my stick broke. Give me a new one. I need one. They'd say, go to Pure Hockey and buy one. Mm. You know, and so now we have that support system, and it's so great to have a home where we're being treated like our professional male counterparts to, like, the T of 1% of their salary. However, we get there. We're getting there, slowly but surely. And so that has been a great support system, as well as the fans have totally embraced us, and that's my favorite part because they don't look at me and say, oh, you're a women's hockey player. Good for you. It's... It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to have a role model for my child. It's so nice to be able to watch your games. It's such a high level of hockey. And so on both fronts, we're just feeling like it was a great success this year. And I was about to ask you that. You just touched on something I was about to ask about, which was that you know, which was about role models and things like that. You know, I've I've got an eight-year-old daughter, and you, it must it, it must feel great to see like uh, to see like families and and, uh, and young girls in the stands. Yeah, and you know what's so funny is I always expect young girls, little girls, with hockey jerseys. But this year we had so many boys walking up with our posters and asking for an autograph, and they don't look at it like we're girls and we're worse. We're hockey players. We're hockey players. Yeah. Right. And so I always say that this year we found a way to drop the word women out of our title. I don't have to go up to someone and say, hi, I'm a women's professional hockey player. Because you can look at me, hopefully clearly tell I'm a woman, <laughs> and you don't have to say that. So we have this great ability to say, I'm a hockey player. And watching little kids get excited about our game or see us in the rink and notice our bag and say, oh my gosh, you play for the Connecticut Whale. That's where I'm finding that that's my proud moment. You know, I always would look up to the U.S. Olympic players because that was our highest love caliber of player that we could watch. So I was a little kid following Courtney Kennedy around the BU rink, like, give me your autograph, oh my gosh. And now there's pros. So I'm not surpassing high school, college, Olympics. There's pro in between there. And a lot of the pro players are making that Olympic team and using this as their place to train. And it's so great to watch that as well. And you also had media coverage. I know your games were broadcast because I know your, your broadcaster, Phil, Jub uh, Phil Jubileo, is a friend of mine. So, and he does a great job calling games. It's absolute N NHL quality. So you've got that going as well. And the coverage was great. I mean, there really was a professional feeling. Plus, there was a winter classic edge to it, wasn't there? Yes, so we had the capability of playing our Canadian counterpart. So this is the big duel, right? You have the Canadian League and the U.S. League, and we're always fighting, duking it out, who's going to be better? And then it was like a grace from God. We had the NHL reach out and say, how about you? we mirror the, the, uh, the NHL game? And we said, oh, my gosh, yes, let's do it. Yeah. And so having people even think about us, Having that be front of mind is where we're stepping up because the Canadian League does have a team from Boston and Montreal, but we have a team from Boston as well, and they didn't say, hey, CWHL, put your two teams in. They said, let's do something here. Let's connect you guys in some type of way, and that was really exciting. We also had Nesson and ESPN3 and Cross Ice Pass online streaming, Phil, we had AJ Malesko. We had so many people that were able to help us with the broadcasting aspect of it, and it was a rave success. We had people watching from the UK even. I get, we're getting tweets from the UK, and I'm thinking to myself, the fact that we can touch lives that far is so amazing. We had people road tripping from St. Louis and Alabama and all these places to watch our games because we're doing such a great job of saying, hey, you can watch us. Wherever you are, however you can, watch us. We're going to let you kind of experienced the feeling and that was a lot of fun. It had to be surreal. Yeah, definitely was. Oh, no, I was going to say, I was going to comment. I don't want to take over here, Don. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was just going to comment what she said earlier about that taking a penalty to get a breather. You know, the, the viewers might think she was kidding. She wasn't. She was watching those highlights and saying, ooh, slash. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I, no, I, I was wondering about that, too. What you saw and, you know, did you like the quality of what you were saying? Yeah, and it's, it's fun to watch women's hockey. It's fun to watch girls' hockey. And when high school hockey starts getting competitive, because when I was, like I said, when I was playing, it was 10 to nothing. It yeah. was blowout games. It was either the team could compete or they couldn't. You know, they had a freshman goalie that just started playing that year, or they didn't. And so now watching girls train from a young age and playing hockey all the way up, it's so interesting. A game two to one, that would have never happened when I was in high school. So it's so, it's so different, but at the same time, 
when you watch those girls be able to enrich themselves and learn and play and, and play together for a long period of time, it's such a fun atmosphere. So it's, it's good to see. I love watching high school hockey. You talked that. about being an advocate to a certain extent and being a role model. And here in Connecticut, girls hockey is not considered a CIAC sport. It's not an official state sport. What can, what can you do, what can your teammates do, what can the league do to inspire more girls to get involved in girls hockey? I think the biggest difference maker between somebody that's going to go try out for the team and somebody that's going to just kind of play on the pond by themselves is confidence. The more we show girls and kids and anyone that if they want to try something, they absolutely can. I have a very unconventional path where I didn't go to prep school or I didn't have a skating coach or I didn't have all these opportunities. I made them. I wanted to play high school hockey. I, that's all I wanted. I said, I want to play high school hockey just like my brother. So I said, I'm going to do everything I can to get to that pinnacle. I get to that stage of the game, and then I go, okay, maybe I'll play Division Three. I start playing my freshman, my sophomore year. I start to get D1 looks, and I'm thinking, okay, I could do that too. So I'm going, okay, now D1. And so all of these periods, these new gates became available, and I'm jumping over and trying to get there, and I'm fighting against the grain. But it's all confidence. If a girl wants to go learn how to play a sport, she can. She wants to go play soccer, if she wants to play field hockey, if she wants to play football, if she wants to play hockey. All of these things should be open for them to try. Not because they're girls and they should have more opportunity, right. but because they're kids and kids like to play sports. And when it comes down to it, hockey's a fun sport. And I'd be lying to say I'd have a bad day at school and I wouldn't go hit someone in the corner. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right, that was cool. Like, I'm good now, you know? And so hockey gives you a nice avenue to let some of that out in a safe and in a fun environment. So I think that a lot of times when we talk about why isn't it accepted statewide or nationwide or anything like that, it's just confidence. You have to let girls go out and be athletes. They don't have to be female athletes. They don't have to be girls high school players. They just have to be able to train and perform like athletes. I'd like to just see us think of everyone as athletes. I do line. too. Bottom line. What's next? For me, um, I work in Connecticut. I work in sales. As you can tell, I love to talk, so it's so much fun. <laughs> um, so I do that, and then, you know, all of us are looking at it. Are we going to re-sign with the team we're on? Are we going to try to move? Are we going to move away from the sport? And for me, it's been, it's been a hard couple hours. I was going to say days, but it hasn't <laughs> been days yet. Um, it's, been a hard, it's, a, it's been a tough time trying to figure out, do I keep playing, or have I done it? You know, I don't know when I can draw the line and say, okay, I've done it, or... I, I'm not done yet. Yeah. And there's so much more to go, and there's so much more we need to do for the sport and for girls and players of girls hockey in general. And I'm trying to figure out, do I do that as an athlete or do I do that as a support system or do I do that as a leader of a foundation or you know something? So I'm trying to figure out where my niche is right now, and that's the hardest part for me. I have fans, I have family members, I have everyone. What are you doing next year? When are you resigning? And it's yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know if that's my, my place. And so, you know, now it's, it's definitely a tougher decision making, sit down and really think about your life. But I can't see letting this mission go without completing it. And you fought some injuries this year too, right? I did, I did. I, I thank the Lord, knock on wood, it wasn't that bad comparatively. Um, <clears throat> I have a, two herniated discs and I had torn my hip flexor. So it was a long uphill battle to get where I was, but I ended up playing in one of our games this weekend. Mm -hmm. So I made it to postseason play. I was so lucky to have such a strong support system with the league helping my, my personal training and everything like that. <clears throat> so that was such a, a huge support, as well as some of the players that don't have that luxury. One of my close friends, Denna Lang, didn't get the capability to have that. So her injury was a lot more severe. Now we have an organization set up to donate, and it's denalang.org. And if you have, you know, any time, just look at her story. She's such an empowering young woman. She's took, she's taken such a challenging, not, not even problem. It's just, a, just a challenging situation, and turned it into an absolute win for herself, for hockey, for, for so many people. And I think that's that was crazy. So I, I was injured. A lot of us faced a lot of injuries, but no one faced it nearly as gracefully as Denna did. Can we get you to come back another time? Absolutely. Boy, this was fun so, because can we, we can could talk a lot longer. Yeah, we'll bring her here. Have her, have her bring the, what was it, the Isobel Cup? What is it, the... Uh, oh, yes. the Isabel Cup. Is, is, Isabel? Well, okay. I have to win it first, well, and then I'll bring it. Saying. Bring it back next year. I will say this. Whether you play or not, hockey needs the likes of you. You are great for the sport. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for coming on. It's been a lot of fun talking with you, and we, we will do it again. 
Dynamite. We've got to take a break here. We'll come back. Don and I will wrap up the show right after this on the HAN Network.